Hello, welcome to Prezim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 61 of C-Sharp video series. In this session, we'll discuss about what are partial classes, the advantages of using partial classes, and the places where we use partial classes today. Partial classes allow us to split a class into two or more physical files. All these physical parts are then combined into a single class when the application is compiled. The partial keyword can also be used to split a structure or an interface over two or more physical files. Let's understand these partial classes with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a very simple ASP.NET web application project. Let's add a simple class file to this project. Right click on the project, add new item and let's add a class file and let's call this customer.cs. I want to create a very simple customer class and this customer class is going to have two private properties. So private string underscore first name and another private property private string underscore last name. Okay, to expose these two private fields, I'm going to have two public properties. So public string first name get return underscore first name and set underscore first name is equal to value. And similarly, if I want to generate you know the property for the last name I can simply right click on that refactor encapsulate field click OK that should generate the property for us automatically so if you look at this class so far we have two very simple private fields and to expose those private fields we have two public properties let's also have a simple public method which returns the full name of the customer so public string let's call this get full name and all this method is going to do is concatenate the first name and last name together. So return underscore first name. To that concatenate a comma with a space and then last name. Okay, so it's a very simple class with two private fields, two public properties and one public method. And this is how we have been creating classes all this while. Okay, but then if you look at this class, this class is present in a single physical file that's customer.cs. Now is it possible to split this class into two or more physical files? Absolutely, we can do that and that's what is the partial keyword used for. Okay, so let's actually split this class into, into two or more physical files. Actually, we'll split this into two files in this example. So let's add a class file and I'm going to call this partial uh, partial customer one. I'm going to name this as so and click add. So that adds that file partial customer one. But then I want to call this class as partial customer class. And along the same lines, let's add another file to this project. So add new class. And I'm going to call this partial customer two dot cs. OK, click Add. So that should add that file. And I'm going to call this public class partial customer. Now, if you look at this one, this class doesn't have the partial keyword. Now, the first thing, the idea is basically we want to split this customer class into two physical files. So if that's your intention, we have to use the partial keyword. So the first thing that I have to do here is I'm going to use the partial keyword. So public partial class partial customer. So this class is a partial customer class. How do I know that? Because I'm using the partial keyword. Okay, so I'm going to use this even in partial customer 2.cs file. So in both the places, we said this is a partial class using this partial keyword. Now, in this first piece, you know, in partial customer 1.cs, I'm going to have just the private fields and the two public properties. So let's copy them together and paste them here. So if you look at this, this part of the partial class is containing my private fields and my public properties. And partial customer 2, that is this physical file, 
which contains the rest of the partial customer class is going to contain get full name the the public method that we have so let me copy and paste that here now look at this this underscore first name and underscore last name are these fields defined anywhere within this file no but then I'm able to use those fields here and look at this when I try to compile this project by right clicking and build look at this build succeeded so where are these fields coming from the fact that we have marked this class with the partial keyword the C sharp compiler knows that okay this is only a part of the class these fields should be maybe they could be present in the other part and that's true if you look at partial customer onecs file though they are private fields as they belong to the same class you know the other partial class is able to access them so when we actually compile this solution what's going to happen these two physical files are now combined into one class called partial customer class the key thing to remember here is that you have to use that partial keyword specifying your intention that you want to you know physically divide this class into two or more files and that's what we have done here okay and to use this class we use it exactly the same way as we do with the customer class for example let's say I want to create an instance of this customer class and then um, you know use that so let's go to the code behind file of the web form so let's say on the page load this customer class if you look at this it's not a partial class it's a regular class okay so if you want to create an instance of that class all we do is customer c1 is equal to new customer so c1 dot first name let's say that is equal to prajim and maybe c1 dot last name is equal to technologies and then if I want to print out the full name or if I want to retrieve the full name let's say string a full name and let's call this full name one is equal to c1 dot get full name method and then probably we can print that out onto the response stream so response dot write um, we can say full name is equal to c1 dot get full name okay now I can do the same thing with our partial class as well if you look at this partial customer class this is spread across these two files but then you know when after we compile them you know it will be formed as one class so now look at that I'm going to create an instance of this partial customer exactly the same way as I have done this customer class look at this I'm able to extract the first name property as usual let's call this pregame and similarly I am able to access the last name maybe in this case we'll call it tech and look at that c2 dot get full name I'm able to access that method as well though it's defined in a different physical file let's call the string full name 2 and if I want to write this out we can just say response dot write c2 dot um, instead of using that we can use the full name to you know variable the same is the case here because we have already retrieved the full name into this variable and then just to have the output in separate lines let's put an HTML break there and let's do the same thing here okay so now if we run this as you might expect the output will be the exact same thing you know so full name is equal to Prajim technologies and Prajim tech because we haven't specified that string here full name okay so partial classes basically allow us to split a class into two or more physical files and that's what we have exactly seen so what are the advantages of using these partial classes the main advantage that you know of using partial classes is that Visual Studio today uses these partial classes to separate automatically generated system code from the developers code let's understand what we mean by that you know for example when we added this web form look at this 
this web form has two code files. One is called webform1.aspx.cs. This is the code behind file where we actually write our code, the custom code that we write for this page. But then there is another page, webform1.aspx.designer.cs. What is this file? This file is going to contain the system generated code. What do we mean by that? For example, Let's flip to the web form. If I drag and drop a text box control onto this web form, okay, so I have this text box control. And if I flip to the source, the ID of the text box is text box one. So where is this ID stored? Okay, if I go to the code behind file, and if I say text box one dot text, look at that, I'm able to retrieve that object. So where is the declaration for this object present? If you look at the code behind itself, you don't have the declaration for that text box anywhere. So where is that present? That is present in the designer file. So text box one here, we are able to use that there. Okay, so when we added the text box control onto the web form, Visual Studio, you know, has actually generated the code for the declaration of the text box and put that in the designer file. So this designer file is used to store all the system generated code whereas this uh, webform1.aspx.cs code behind file is used for the developer's custom code. So we have a clean separation here from the system generated code and the developer's code. So that's how the partial classes are actually used today. Okay. But Microsoft also claims that if you're working on a large project, spreading a class over separate files allow multiple programmers to work on it simultaneously. For example, if you look at this, we have split the customer class into two files, partial customer one and partial customer two. Maybe one developer can work on this file, partial customer two file, you know, implementing all the methods of this class. And the other developer can work on the private fields and public properties that this class exposes. You know, so dividing a class into multiple files here is actually allowing two or more developers to work on that class. Okay, but in reality, I haven't seen anybody using you know partial classes just to work on them simultaneously. Not only ASP.NET web applications, even the Windows Forms applications uh, use you know this technique to separate the system generated code from the developer's code. For example, let's add a Windows application to the solution. So on the solution, right click, add and select new project. I'm going to select Windows app, Windows Forms application here. Click OK. That's going to add the Windows application. And if you look at this, I have a form here. And then onto this form, if I drag and drop a text box control, so I have a text box control here. And then if I go to the forms code file, look at that again, I'm able to access the text box one dot text property. So there should be a declaration for this text box somewhere. Okay. But then if you look at this file itself, the code file here, it doesn't have the declaration for the text box anywhere. So where is this present? Again, this form has a designer file form1.designer.cs and if we scroll down you see a declaration for that text box control there. Okay, so these web applications and Windows applications to separate the system generated code from the developer's code, you know, we use these partial classes. In the next session, we'll, we'll talk about the rules to keep in mind when creating partial classes. You know, one of the very important rules to keep in mind is that when we create these partial classes, you know, it's very important that you use the partial keyword. Otherwise, you know, the system will not know your intention of dividing that class into two. For example, we have two partial classes here, partial class one, I mean partial customer one dot CS, partial customer two dot CS. For example, if I remove the partial keyword from this, then it's like a regular class. Now there is already a one a class with partial keyword and you're creating another class partial customer here. And if I try to compile this, as you might expect, we get a compiler error stating, you know, missing partial modifier on declaration of type ADO demo dot partial customer. So on this class, you're missing the partial keyword because there is another partial declaration of this type where in partial customer one dot CS file.
okay so there are several rules that these partial classes should follow we'll talk about them in the next session on this slide you can find resources for asb.net c sharp and sql server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day